Let's start with a small experiment. Did you hear her? Who? Okay, let's let's listen to it. No? Okay, now let's Does that sparkle in your eyes bear my name? Okay. Now that voice of the woman singing her heart out is how I consider my identity. Drowned by the noise of stereotypes. Only heard if all noise is turned down. Hello. My name is Cynthia, and I come from the country called Africa. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> now, what do we know about this continent, Africa? Poverty. Disease. Famine. Political instability. Wars. Tyrants. Don't forget, remember this. Corruption, blood diamonds. Did you watch the movie? Yeah, I'm sure everybody watched the movie. Jungles, how can we forget? Pyramids, Lion King, <laughs> right? Zebras, of course, safaris and everything. We need to make sure we have a good picture here. Couple more zebras, giraffes. You know, that was my nickname in junior high school because I had such a long neck. <laughs> I didn't appreciate it. So let's just add some more giraffes for effect. <laughs> so we know all this and even more already from the media and from the sensationalist news on TV. But what I want to tell you today is a different story. I want to tell you a story about a different Africa with a different tone of voice, a happy tone of voice. No pity, no sadness, no unsure hope for its future potential. A story of the flourishing people of Africa. I'll tell you two stories first. So, I used to work in a writing center, right? And one day, I had a student ask me, are you happy to be an American away from all the wars at home? So I, was, I asked him, are you sure I'm not confusing my country, Ghana, with another country? Because the last time I checked, there was no war going on. I was really surprised at his insistence, at his flawed claim that my country was at war. I mean, really? Another story. So my friend and I have this joke where he introduces me to others as the lion chaser. I mean, did you know I used to chase lions in my backyard every morning? Those buggers make such a mess. <laughs> no kidding, they make such a mess. <laughs> now seriously, if I saw any lions in my backyard, which is as unlikely as snow in Ghana, trust me, I'm going to run as fast as my legs can go. <laughs> the sad and unfortunate reality is that Many people believe this story when they first hear it. And even though I laugh at their ignorance, I actually feel a twinge of sadness at the continent's identity as a primitive battlefield. <clears throat> when I came to graduate school as an international student, I had no thoughts of my identity. I mean, as Ghanaian, much less African. I was no stranger to traveling or cultural diversity. In my mind, I was Cynthia. Right. My personality determined my identity. But I soon found out that that was not the case. My identity had already been shaped for me. All I had to do was fit the mold. Act like an African, be, like, be an African, and speak like one. But I didn't talk about village life. After all, I lived in the cosmopolitan city of Accra. And I was pretty much up to date on popular culture. I do love Justin Bieber. Go Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> My
My family wasn't starving, and I wasn't in awe of the simple pleasures of the American life. When I insisted I was from a middle-class background, I had a lot of questions inquiring what my life at home was like. I can tell you what life in Ghana is like. Despite all the developmental issues, like power cuts a couple of times a week, trust me, you get used to that. What I see when I step out every day are the smiling faces behind the tabletop shops, the mobile phone kiosks, going to school, that one was my primary school, going to work, a proud people celebrating their lives, living normal lives like everyone else in the world, only differentiated by culture, yet drowned by the noise of stereotypes. Other African international students I spoke to confirmed this feeling of a straight-laced African identity they felt expected to conform to. And this got me wondering, how are other Africans like myself identifying? I mean, I was curious. So I asked on Facebook and Twitter. And I got some very interesting responses that were far from the cliches. I continued my search online, looking for more beyond the stereotypes. And what I found confirmed what I see when I look at Africa, a people rising. Many people assume Africans are too busy trying to survive to even have economies worth taking note of. However, today, African economies are considered amongst the fastest growing, with impressive average rates of growth. Economies no longer fueled by only unprocessed natural resources, but also services like banking and telecommunications, driven by local African corporations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Few of us are aware that technology is also driving advancement in Africa. African technocrats are creating localized solutions, presenting new ways of doing things on the continent, creating, using simple tools like mobile phones, creating apps for mobile money, apps to check the authenticity of medicines. Progressive conversations are taking place on social media, providing a platform for entrepreneurial networking, idea sharing, and social activism, just like everywhere else in the world. Right? Political and social activists are working in the spotlight and behind the scenes, pushing government reform and altruistic development agenda, challenging government complacency. Yet all these efforts go unnoticed, drowned by the noise of stereotypes. Few of us are aware of the vibrant African arts and culture scene that is larger than just cultural drumming and traditional dancing where local fashion is as active as the entertainment industry. The highly successful movie business in Africa is highly competitive and exciting, just like the music business, which is throbbing with the sounds of modern Afro music. Now, all this information, and even more, is right there at your fingertips, <laughs> at the click of a button. I encourage everyone to educate themselves, to look for information not only on Africa, but by Africans telling their own stories. Now, I'm not here <laughs> to lecture you on Africa, no. I'm not here to get into the details. I'm here to get you started. As oversimplified as my talk may appear, what we are seeing today is the emergence of a millennial African, presenting to the world the new reality of life on the continent and our ability to thrive. And what we need now is a new metaphor for the identity of the African, that is beyond the noise of stereotypes, to allow for a redefinition reflective of the progression currently taking place. Now, Africans are resilient. Africans are bringing positive change in their communities. Africans are living multicultural lives, passionate lives, happy to be Ghanaian, Nigerian, 
Moroccan, Tunisian, Egyptian. Happy to be African. Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Thank you.